Hi, I'm Jared Gustafson, OutdoorChannel.com's Junior Space Correspondent. I'm here at the Kennedy Space Center. Right behind me here is Space Shuttle Endeavour on launch pad number 39A. And on this side is the countdown clock. As you see, it's coming up on six minutes right now to launch. Very exciting time. It's February 8th, 2010. It's about 4.05 a.m. Space Shuttle's going to be taking off about 4.14 in the morning. Space Shuttle Endeavour's going on its 13-day mission to drop off the final U.S. built modules to the International Space Station. They're going to be dropping them off and installing them. This marks the uh, final five liftoffs of the space shuttle program that are supposed to conclude in September. Now you're probably wondering, why is Outdoor Channel reporting on a space shuttle launch? That's not hunting and fishing and shooting sports. Well, here at Outdoor Channel, we're about adventure. Whether it's adventure in hunting, and adventure in fishing, adventure in shooting, and nothing more, whether you're young or old, conjures up the imagination than space. I mean, it's the final frontier. You can't go wrong. It's the ultimate adventure. So hopefully one of these days we'll all be able to go up in a spacecraft and experience it for ourselves. But for now, we get to watch what the other guys get to do. Earlier, I visited the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. Let's see what they have. Well, since I wasn't able to see the space shuttle take off this morning, I figured, what's the next best thing? Well, let's check out the Kennedy Space Center. So here I'm at the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. Let's go see what this has to offer. Once inside, your senses are delighted by the feeling of space with the dimmed lighting, the memorabilia, and interactive displays surrounding you. If you're a space nut, this is the place for you. All of the displays are packed with information covering the 40 plus year history of America's space program. Here you can experience what it's like to go in one of the G-Force training machines for the astronauts. Looks like a headache waiting to happen. This is the, a mock-up of the space capsule that Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong used to land on the moon. Here's the bottom of the Apollo space capsule. You can see the scorch marks. There are plenty of hands-on displays for the young and old, and they were not easy. Well, it's been pretty interesting here at the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. I'm, uh, I'm Jared Gustafson, and uh, I'll see you next time on our next flight. I'm out of here. Uh, hey, can someone help me with this jetpack? After a safe landing, I walked over to the other side of Kennedy Space Center. Well, upon first sight, this looks pretty exciting. We have the booster rockets, the external fuel tank, and a mock-up of the space shuttle that we get to walk through. We also have the shuttle launch experience. I'm kind of excited. I don't know what to expect. Let's go find out. So here we're going to walk inside the example of the space shuttle. Here we're in the cargo bay area. It's not very big. Not as big as I thought it could possibly be. Welcome aboard. You are on the mid-deck of the Space Shuttle Explorer. The lockers you see are located directly below the commander and pilot work area. They contain food, supplies, and experiments. To the left of these lockers is the galley. I'm now going to enter the top of its floor. Some mock-up model of the space shuttle. We'll be in the top side of the cargo bay area. You'll see a lot more. Ah, see, there's a mock-up of a payload sitting in there. There's the Canadian arm. The Canadian arm is what's used to help move everything once it's in space. It's like a big crane. And the flight deck. A space shuttle re-enters the atmosphere at approximately 17,000 miles per hour. It reduces its speed in a series of S-turns as it glides toward the Earth. You know, it's pretty amazing that the uh, space shuttle 
looks like such a massive aircraft, which it is very big, but it does not have very much room at all. The crew quarters are very small, uh, so that means that most of the space is left for sensors and, uh, and other devices that the shuttle uses. The crew really doesn't have much room. It's pretty amazing. Uh, the cargo bay area is not very large either, say maybe a few hundred feet. And uh, so it's pretty impressive when you have such a, a big aircraft that requires so much room and space to uh, get their payload up. I mean, you look at the size of the booster rockets that are used. It's very impressive, uh, you know, and, and kind of interesting what's required to get that aircraft up when really th there's not a lot of room. I mean, if you can see here, I'm going to turn around and the booster rockets right here behind me massive massive booster rockets and the uh, external fuel tank as well that's used to lift that aircraft up into space so pretty impressive the uh, amount of resources that are required to launch the space shuttle when the human element is pretty minimal the shuttle program draws the visitors to kennedy space center as is apparent with the shuttle displays but there are some amazing relics in the garden now this is my type of garden. The rocket garden is home to rockets spanning from the juvenile years of shuttle technology. Scale models of space capsules from Mercury and Apollo missions, which you can climb inside, and the behemoth Saturn rocket used during the Apollo missions. Well, enough of these relics. Let's get back to the viewing area. Shuttle Endeavor is about to lift off. T-minus 16 seconds. Sounds of Russian water system have been activated. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, we have to go ready to start, 2, 1, and booster ignition. Twenty-eight seconds into flight, Endeavour is flying at 1,100 miles per hour, is 1.3 miles in altitude, and 7 miles downrange from Kennedy Space Center. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle boosters and external tank weighed 4.5 million pounds, and the total thrust at launch was almost 6.5 million pounds. The next step will be the burnout and separation of the solid rocket boosters. Combined, the twin boosters provide 5.3 million pounds of thrust to propel the orbiter toward space. At two minutes into flight, Endeavour is flying at 3,000 miles per hour and accelerating. Endeavour Houston, nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. Copy, nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. Wow, what an adventure. Spatial Endeavour just took off, heading to the International Space Station to drop off the final two U.S.-built modules, which will increase its size and its visibility for the astronauts living on board. Well, that's it for this adventure. I'm Jared Gustafson, Junior Space Correspondent for OutdoorChannel.com. I look forward to seeing you on the next adventure, whether it be on Earth or in space. <laughs>